And our Mint Mobile question today has something to do with that lawsuit that's going on about misleading trailers. Take it away. Hey, what's going on, J. Crew? It's Will on, all the way from Worcester, Massachusetts. So I know you guys spoke a little bit about the recent lawsuit against Universal Studios for false advertisement in the trailer yesterday. But I was thinking, do you think this will lead to the studios putting up warning labels before a trailer starts? And how does this lawsuit compare to Spider-Man No Way Home hiding our boys Toby and Andrew? Or scenes we never saw in the Infinity War movie showing Hulk in the final battle? Like, how do these examples differ from the lawsuit? Thanks for taking my question and bring on the filthy. All right, man. Thanks a lot for calling in. So, yeah, we talked about this before the Christmas break that, for those of you who don't know, last year a lawsuit got filed against, uh, I think it was uh, Universal, mm -hmm. for their movie Yesterday. A nice little film, by the way. And but that was brought to them, a class action lawsuit was brought by a couple of fans who had paid for the movie because in the trailers for Yesterday, popular actress Anna de Armas is in the trailers. They, being Anna de Armas fans... They thought, well, then we want to see this. So they paid for the movie only to find out that Anna Darmus does not appear in the movie. So they brought a lawsuit. The, stu the studio's lawyers filed a motion to have the lawsuit dismissed. And the judge said, no, this lawsuit has merit and it will go to trial. So that was a big blow. Now, this has brought up a lot of questions going around, including a couple of questions that you just asked. Well, what, what parts of trailers does this affect? Does this mean trailers can't have misdirects? Does this mean that, you know what? Because some people saying, well, then I want to sue them too because I went to go see this movie because the trailer looked funny and I didn't think the movie was funny. Well, look, the judge in their ruling, when they talked about why this lawsuit has merit, they expressed, look, there is room for artistic interpretation and artistic expression. Absolutely. So, for example, them making, I think, the most misleading trailer in history, which was The Bridge to Terabithia, a okay. Disney film. That is, to me, the most misleading thing. Now, all the actors are in it, all that kind of stuff, but that trailer made it look like a whimsical thing of children finding a magical kingdom in the oh, forest. Yeah. If you read the book, you watched that trailer and went, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no, this is no. a dark, sad, depressing, mm -hmm. like, like, good movie. But yeah, but you're no going to cry, bitch. Yep, not the movie that mothers <laughs> took their kids to no. go, that they thought they were taking their kids to see, right? But even within the ru ruling of this lawsuit, that trailer is fine. This is a specific thing. And that specific thing was you cross a line as a studio putting out marketing when you literally tell the audience, this famous actor is in this movie. And then they're not in the movie. Now, some may say, well, you know, a lot of times, you know, Rob, you and I have talked about this. I, I've brought this up myself. That, listen, a lot of times these trailers are made before the final edits. Sure. And edits get made. Yeah, but the problem was that even after they edited Anadarmus out of the movie, even once the movie was done its theatrical run and it was playing on streaming, they still were playing the trailer with Anna Darmus in it. So they couldn't use that as a defense either. So what about something? Well, they, the trailers didn't show us that Toby and Andrew were in it. Well, that's okay. Trailers don't have to show you something that is in there. They don't have to do that. That's fine. Well, Avengers Infinity War, they showed Hulk running in the final battle. True, but Hulk is in the movie. I mean, these were some of the lines that the judge was trying to say. It's like, look, the, the, the studios and the movies, they still have a lot of artistic wiggle room to present their marketing for their movies. But there is a line. Because, you know, here's what happens, Rob. If the judge doesn't say, if the judge doesn't come out and say, no, bad Universal, Here's what happens. Imagine a scenario where Spider-Man 4 is coming out. And this judge does not punish Universal for doing that. Well, Disney can go, well, you know what? People love that we had Andrew and Toby in that last movie. Yeah, but we don't have Andrew and Toby in the new movie. Yeah, but people don't know that. Why not in the new trailer? Why don't we put in, let's get Andrew and Toby down, give them $100,000 each just for the day. Let's bring them down. Let's show a scene in the trailer where Tom, Andrew, and Toby are all sitting at a dining, in, in a diner somewhere talking. Put that in the trailer. But they're not in the movie. Doesn't matter. The law says we can put whoever we want in the trailer. So that is the type of protection I think the judge is trying to make. It's not a coverall. It's like, your trailers can't have any artistic expression. Yes, they can. There can be misdirects. You can do all that kind of stuff. 
but there's a line that you cannot cross. And apparently the judge Rob is saying that line is you can't tell the audience that they're going to get a movie star in it and not have the movie star in the movie. Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three-month plan, you get another three months for free. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know I've been using Mint Mobile long before this holiday deal and I have to say it is the perfect time to switch. I have absolutely loved using Mint Mobile. And like I've told you guys many times, I am now spending less than one third of what I used to spend under one of the other major mobile carriers. And now with the whole buy three months, get three months free deal, it's even better. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you need a new device, for a limited time, get six months of free service when you buy a select device and plan. So guys, for a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, I think you just described it well. We're talking about deception. I mean, this, this is... Look... Everyone knows that when a movie gets made throughout history, there have been scenes that are in movie trailers that were not actually in the finished film. In this particular instance, as you pointed out, there is an actor in a trailer that does not appear in the finished film. If you buy the physical media or if you go online, you can watch the deleted scene because they included it in. But but look, I think these guys, whoever the two people who made the lawsuit, I think it was cheeky what they did. However, they were pointing out, and the reason that this is different than all those other instances is, as you just illustrated, it's deception. They didn't mean it. It wasn't like, look, this happens. Stuff happens. When they make a trailer, the people at the trailer house, they might have made that as a last-minute excision. In the digital world, you can make those last-minute excisions, but nobody thought to, like, oh, the trailer's already out there. You'd have to pay the trailer company more money to get the trailer to recut it. Then they have to remaster it in however many different forms and however many... There's, they just don't have a way to, there's no money, it seems silly, but there's no money at the studio level to fix a trailer that's already been done. Because it would cost a lot of money because the entire process, it's not the same running length. You'd have to change the subtitle tracks. You'd have to change the dubbing, whatever. It'd be a real pain in the ass. So a studio just let it go. But no one ever thought the studios were never thinking like, oh, it's deceptive. But now somebody called them on it, which is actually kind of cool. I think it's kind of annoying, but it's also kind of cool that they said that because now, like with everything, people have to do a little bit more due diligence. And that means the marketing department has to coordinate more with the filmmakers in the studio to be like, okay, where are we at in terms of the cut? And we have to make sure that our trailers aren't going to do this anymore. Chris, you mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a little bit. We've had a chance to marinate on it. Yeah. but. But, you know, where does the line get drawn then for, for movie trailers and what they can and cannot show? I mean, this does feel very just weird to me in general. As an actor, I would love to be guaranteed to be in something that I have filmed my scenes for. That'd be amazing, right? Because this has happened to me. This has happened to Aaron. This has happened to tons of actors where you do a film and then you're really excited about it. And then you see the end product and go, oh, I'm not in this at all. I'm not here at all. You have your friends over to watch the premiere of it and you go, well, whoops, time to drink. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love it if this was a guarantee for that's all of us. That's also your motto in life, isn't it? Pretty much. It? Whoop, time to drink. That's that's my album that I'm going to be dropping. <laughs> um, time whoop, drink. time to drink. <laughs> but I think from this kind of this misleading standpoint, if you are going to go see a movie specifically for one actor, sure, I understand being disappointed if they didn't show up in the end product here. But but to Rob's point, you know, that that is why you used to have special features and everything, which was a fun bonus right. of just, oh, now I get to see that cool deleted scene. Oh, now I get to see this. I feel like this, honestly, it feels like a money grab, right? Of like, well, Anna Darmus wasn't in this, so I'm going to capitalize on that because... Everything legally makes sense. All of their points do hold water when you actually looked at, look at it. But it just feels weird to not be able to, to sure, advertise in this way. Sure, but is it true to say that people, let alone corporations, mm -hmm. will not stop bad behavior 
unless you make oh, them stop. Oh, absolutely, right? yeah. Because again, imagine they decide all the money. Tom Cruise doesn't want to do Top Gun 3. Okay. Well, with all the money, we need to do another Top Gun. Okay, we're going to make another Top Gun, and it's going to be called Top Gun Bob. Okay? <gasps> so, Bob. But yes. in the trailers, hey, guys, you know what? Universal won that lawsuit. Let's put Tom Cruise in the trailers. But Tom Cruise isn't in the movie. I mean, but honestly, the question becomes, if, if somebody doesn't make the studio stop, and let's face it, nothing short of a lawsuit is going to make them stop. Oh, absolutely. If they don't, I mean... where does the line get drawn? When do we say, wait a minute, now you've crossed the line. Now you're you're saying certain actors are in it that just aren't in it, and it, it's... I don't know. Well, I, I think corporations obviously to be drawn here. they are going to do the ask for forgiveness instead of permission thing yes. until yes. they can. Because we right? all do that. We all do that. We all love to toe the line. However, I think doing like she had what two scenes in this film? Yes. That's a little different than being like a starring vehicle with Tom Cruise. Two scenes Whoop. of the film, but thirty percent of the trailer, or maybe maybe like twenty one percent of the trailer. Yeah. Right. But, That's the thing. But here's here's the thing. Again, I have to go back to intent. I don't think in this particular instance, anybody was trying to defraud anyone. It's just, that was the natural, uh, and the studio wasn't at fault. It was the filmmakers, you know, the filmmakers and and it, collaboration, whatever. But that's good until you put it out on streaming and you're still using the wrong trailer. Well, that's, yes, all the, yes, I can see that, but it wasn't, it's like nobody's, it, this is just a normal course of how business was done. Now that you're being held accountable, I'm, I think, okay. But also here's the thing. Here's what I I kind of have a problem with. Are you going to choke it up with these kind of new suits? Was this really something? I, I see these guys. It's funny that they did this, and maybe they'll get some cash. But is this what we really... But but but, but to, to back that up even more, remember, there was a lawsuit filed on the Ryan Gosling film... Um, Drive. Drive, right? Was it, was it? That was just the name, Drive, Drive. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nicholas Winding Refn. Right. There was a lawsuit filed saying, hey, these trailers made it look like it was a Fast and the Furious kind of movie, and it totally wasn't. It was totally different, right? And the the courts rejected it. They said, no, 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 that, that is the thing. But this, the court said, this is a little bit different. Oh, yeah. So it's not like just anything can come and get thrown against the wall. Because sure. the courts said, hey, no, wait a minute. You're going too far. Th th that was fine. Yes, the, did the movie feel like the trailer? No, but that was their artistic license to do it that way. So dismissed. So this is a little bit, I don't know. Guys, I think this is going to be a question. Wait until the actual trial now happens. We've only had one ruling in this against the studio, but we'll see what happens when the trial comes. How do you guys feel about this now that you've had a week or two to think about it? What's standing out to you? Is there a line that needs to be drawn? Should the studios be allowed to put whatever they want in the trailers? If there is a line, where do you draw it? I don't know. However you guys feel about it, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there.